are these people? This story upset the crap out of me because, of course, I love Common Dreams. Common Dreams is an indie media award honoree. But they get union stuff wrong. They get are you fucking kidding me? They get union stuff wrong because they never talk to a worker. They talk to the union bosses who represent their own agenda. And they talk to the progressive lawmakers because I think they exist to kiss AOC and Rashida Tlaib's ass. Their managing editor is a guy by the name of John Qualey, who I really have a lot of deep respect for. He does not seek the limelight. He does not write very often. But he got very excited when they announced yesterday, when the machinists announced, thank you, JW, thank you. The machinists didn't get a pension, and we're going to talk about this. Thank you. I didn't hear about the Boeing Union. Lazy quack hole. Okay. Well, you're about to. John Qualey gets excited and says, strikes work. Boeing Union workers win tentative contract with a 35% wage increase. Yeah. Your enemy is laughing at you. Thank you, Richie. We're going to hear from him later. The fact that the company has put forward an improved proposal is a testament to the resolve and dedication of the frontline workers who've been on strike and the, the strong support they've received from so many, said the machinist and aerospace worker. Well, some of them, the yes. Actual fuck? But no, that's actually their leadership that said that. So... I didn't take this whole, I don't think I, I clipped this whole thing, but it, it was short. Striking union members who work for the aerospace giant Boeing reached a tentative contract agreement Saturday after nearly six weeks on the picket line, demanding better wages and benefits. They were also demanding a pension, the, re, the restoration of their pension. And we're going to again get to this because I also clipped another article that goes much more into detail about what's missing from this agreement. The IAM and Aerospace Workers District 751, which has been on strike since September 13th, announced the breakthrough in a statement, and Boeing also confirmed that a deal had been reached. Okay. The TA, and they link to the TA so you can read it, and they summarize it there, which will have to receive a majority from union members before finalized. Now, remember, the majority of these union members voted to go on strike and authorize the strike in the first place for these benefits. Now, this includes a 35% wage increase over four years of the contract. They were asking for 40. A larger signing bonus of $7,000, meaning that every employee is going to get $7,000 right now for signing this contract. Why do you think it's worth that much to Boeing to do this? Guaranteed minimum payouts in our new annual bonus program, bonuses much better than investment retirement, and increased contributions to worker 401k retirement plans. Again, not a pension, mm -hmm. but a 401k. So you got a quote in there from the IAM negotiating committee. With the help of acting U.S. Secretary of Labor, Julie Su. We've received a negotiated proposal and resolution to end the strike, and it warrants presenting to the members and is worthy of your consideration. Okay, but the union said it plans to hold a ratification vote as early as Wednesday and that a 50% plus one majority is all that's needed to approve that deal. Quote the, and again, they, they're making concessions already for the fact that they didn't get what they went on strike for. Like many workers in America, IAM members at Boeing have sacrificed greatly for their employer, including during the pandemic when these workers were reporting to the factory as executives stayed at home. These workers deserve to have all those sacrifices recognized. Totally agree. All right. Now, like I said, I can always count on one publication in this world to tell me the straight dope from the worker's perspective. And it's World Socialist website. The goddamn trots. As, as Himbo would say, it's always the trots. And we always joke about the trots because the trots think that everyone is a fascist the minute that they go to work if they're not part of a, an actual communist collective. And usually they're right. And in this case, again, they're right. 
Union announces a snap vote in a bid to shut it down. What do you mean? The IAM leadership announced a new tentative agreement Saturday with Boeing to end a month-long strike by 33,000 workers. A vote on the agreement is scheduled for Wednesday. The IAM has presented the deal as having several key improvements over the initial proposal, but it still remains below what workers are demanding, which includes a 40% raise to fight inflation, the restoration of the company pension, and increased medical benefits. Okay? The proposed contract meets none of these. The proposed raise is only 35% over four years. Minor increases to workers' 401k plans and setting a minimum for the annual bonus at 4%, which previously averaged 3.7. Three-tenths of a percent more. The pension, which is one of the chief demands of the workers, has been completely left out. In a cynical attempt to placate workers, as well as divide old and new workers, the IAM officials wrote that, with the structure of wage increases, quote, members at the max rate will receive 39.7% wage growth over the four-year agreement, which they attempt to spin, writing that it should be safe to say that our goal of over 40% wage growth during the life of the agreement has been achieved. No, 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 it hasn't. And what percentage of the members that are even at the max rate to begin with? The proposal confirms the warning made by WSWS since the beginning of the strike that Boeing and the pro-corporate bureaucrats of the IAM are colluding to get a pro-company contract passed so that Boeing can resume production on its terms and force workers to pay for the company's mountain of self-inflicted debt. Workers must reject this contract by as wide a margin as possible. After four weeks on strike, workers need a new strategy based on mobilizing the working class against Boeing and its allies in Wall Street, both parties in the, U the union bureaucracy. I think that's a fool's errand, personally. As the Boeing Workers Rank and File Committee explained in a statement Wednesday, quote, everything depends wholly on the initiative of the rank and file to expand our struggle and unite with other sections of the working class. The timing of the two votes signals that a decision has already been made at the highest levels that these strikes have to end in the lead up to the presidential election and in order to prepare the home front for catastrophic new wars. Boeing is a major defense contractor and any strike, especially one involving 33,000 machinists, is a direct threat to the U.S. government's ability to continue to supply war materiel for Israel's genocide in Gaza, the U.S. NATO-backed war in Ukraine against Russia, and now the plans for a new war against Iran. The U.S. government played a central role in brokering this new deal, which came only days after the Biden administration dispatched acting Labor Secretary Julie Su to Seattle to take part in those talks. The IAM bureaucracy acknowledged that the new contract was written with the assistance of Sue. Uh-huh. Sue, by the way, was also instrumental in shutting down the three-day strike on the East Coast and Gulf Coast docks on the basis of a 90-day extension without any agreement on the key issue of automation. She's just railroading shit through. And they said that she would be a better labor secretary. The new contract also reflects the massive Boeing uh, backing that Boeing has received from Wall Street, including a $10 billion loan and asset sale of $25 billion. Like this week! The U.S. ruling elite has made clear it is prepared to spend vast sums of money in order to break the machinist strike and set a precedent for contracts in other sections of the working class. The crisis of American capitalism, reflected in part in Boeing's $60 billion in debt, is to be paid on the backs of workers. Of course it was. You don't think the wealthy was going to pay that, did you? Nope. Any minor changes to wages, retirement benefits, 
and the signing bonus will be more than offset by a jobs bloodbath after the strike ends. The company's already announced it's going to lay off 17,000 workers or 10% of the global workforce. And there's no, by the way, written in guarantees on their jobs, on the machinist jobs in this new tentative agreement. No amount that they, you know, no period of time that they can't lay people off. Weak. It's also likely that future cuts are already being planned. Last year, the Teamsters and UAW announced deals at UPS and the big three automakers, respectively, where they cited major wage increases and other provisions to claim massive victories. But within weeks, both UPS and the auto companies announced tens of thousands of layoffs, driven in particular by automation and other new technologies. Huh, how convenient. Um, nobody could have seen that coming, except these guys did and we did at UPS. As we covered, the company announced earlier this year its plans to close or automate 200 facilities in the U.S. on top of 12,000 job cuts announced at the start of the year. In reality, the company already employs tens of thousands fewer people than it did a few years ago, and we know the UPS employs more than 50% part-time employees. And of course, in the auto industry, whole plants are on the chopping block after a limited Stand up bullshit strike, thank you, Sean Fain, which the union closely coordinated with the White House, and thousands of supplemental workers have summarily been fired. Thanks a lot for that, Sean Fain. From the beginning, the IAM bureaucracy has had a strategy for defeat, not victory. It never wanted this strike in the first place. It only happened after, like I said, 95% of the workers voted down a sellout deal last month. Since then, it's tried to soften workers up on the picket line with strike pay of $250 a week, which only started on the third week while talks continued behind closed doors, not letting them know what was happening. One worker said the strike pay is horrible. I've had to get a second job at UPS just to survive along with a lot of others. And that also means that there's less of us on the picket lines. So you've got a double-edged sword there. I'm irritated with the union, myself, the leaners. I've been with the company for more than a decade, and I've watched them raise our union dues every time we're getting a cost of living adjust adjustment. So they're taking our money, and they get their pension, but a strike doesn't hit their salary? That's fucked up. The fight going forward must be developed on a new axis. It cannot remain as it is, isolated and led into the ground by the union apparatus. A new leadership directly composed of and accountable to workers must be built. Totally agree. Boeing workers must directly appeal to other sections of workers, including railroaders, dock workers, UPS workers, auto workers, and others, for joint mass industrial action, which, by the way, is illegal in this country. We covered that two years ago. An immediate appeal must also be made to the 5,000 Textron aviation machinists who are voting this weekend on their own contract. So there's a, a committee, a rank and file committee, and they said the whole of corporate America is lining up behind Boeing. The working class must line up behind us. But they're not gonna. So then what? So then what? That's what bothers me. They don't really have an answer for that. It's just, everybody's got to get on board with us. Well, they're not. So what are you going to do? Like, I'm not for signing this agreement. I understand why they're probably going to. They should stay on strike, but I'm not the one who's going to tell them to stay on strike for $250 a week. While their while their team well their IAM leadership gets paid full pay, that's wrong. Doing stories like this is why we are suppressed in the algorithm. Complaining about our labor secretary and our current government is why we get demonetized. 
and talking about the link between Israel and funding for Israel and everything and how this is all linked is why we get demonetized. So if you want to support Indie News Network, you can do so by using those QR codes over on the screen. You can go to cash app, dollar sign, Indie News Network, co-fee.com slash Indie News Network. You can use PayPal, Patreon, subscribe monthly. You can subscribe daily at innnewsletter.com for free, or you can pick up a monthly subscription there. Thank you so much to everyone who has helped us out and contributed to support independent media and make sure that this channel exists and continues to, to thrive and grow and provide you quality content. And you can, thank you. thank you. And you can find us. Thank you very much. That's really nice. Thank you. Yeah. You can find us over on all these different places. I in a newsletter.com youtube.com slash in news network. We've got rumble kick twitch odyssey telegram and Twitter, x.com slash get indie news. So again, thank you so much. Support independent media. Really appreciate it. And uh, see you soon, everyone.